Welcome back to Racing Telemetry. Today we're making an extensive comparative analysis of the qualifying laps between Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen at Albert Park, Australia. But before we get into things, let's explain how everything works. This is the throttle and brake map of Charles, and this is the throttle and brake map of Max. When red, that means that the driver is braking, and vice versa, when green, the driver is on the gas. You also see shades of lighter green, which also represent when the driver is getting onto the gas pedal, and some darker shades of green, which represent the exit of a corner on the traction zone, when the driver is trying to progressively get onto the power 100% as soon as possible. This is Charles Leclerc's speed at the position and his gear of choice. And this is Verstappen's speed difference to Leclerc's speed, and should he use a different gear at that point, the difference is also shown. This is the delta. If positive, Charles is behind with that much, and conversely, the negative values mean that he's ahead of the point of that part of the circuit. We use a delta estimation algorithm based on position, and not the standard calculated delta based on speed distance relations. This results in a better estimation in case of many stop and start sections of the track, which alter the speed calculated deltas and ultimately resolves the issue with telemetry alignment when aligned by distance. This is the rear tyre slippage indicator. The more blue it is, the harder the tyres are over-rotating. Now, let's get into the lap analysis. The run down to turn 1 is comparable, however the Red Bull just has that top end edge here. Constantly being more than 2km per hour faster than Charles, Max is able to gain about 0.4 of a tenth from the main straight all the way down into the braking point. Turn 1 is setting a trend that we see throughout the lap. Ferrari driver is taking a slow in and fast out approach, whilst Max is braking much later and trying to carry more speed but this is at the expense of traction and comes at a premium with him losing out on the next straight. 0.7 of a tenth is lost between Leclerc down to the apex of turn 1, however, the over rotation indicator shows that Charles is able to deal with the oversteer a bit more and he gets less trouble with the traction on the exit of the corner. This is enough to overturn the tables and by the end of the second DRSO, Max is behind by half a tenth. These different corner approaches can be linked to a different car strength and weakness, not only just the driving styles. If this is the case, the longer usage of the brake by Max when he's trying to trail brake would suggest that the Red Bull is more understeery. That is overlapping with the footage that we saw with the Red Bull washing out of turn 1. However, perhaps it's too early to judge from this as the tyre temperatures are still coming up as the lap progresses. Through turn 3 and 4, Verstappen is faster, however the quick brake usage of Leclerc enables him to get on the throttle much earlier and it's a much more harsh driving technique than the one used by Max where he just lifts at turn 4. Ferrari has the edge all the way up to turn 6 resulting in a 1.4 tenth time gain just before the braking zone. Once again, slow in and fast start approach by Charles compared to Max carries more speed into the apex of turn 6. This time Max is able to gain some of the time back and recuperate it although it did seem like he had a bit of a snap or over rotation problem on the left of turn 7. The drag race up to turn 9 is won by the Ferrari with this great low end power unit punch. However, the top end of the Red Bull is much more stronger and perhaps this also suggests that Charles was suffering from a bit of harvesting or clipping. turn 9, Max is trail braking more, perhaps to counteract the high speed understeer, but this does not prevent him from carrying more speed through turn 9 and 10. The net gain is 0.9 of a tenth. Another interesting thing here is that Max is using a lower gear for turn 10, which can also be maybe a technique that the Red Bulls are using as they have much more longer gears, but this is often a technique used to also rotate the car much better and precisely. The 
The run into turn 11 is pretty equal in terms of the time difference. The early throttle usage and the big rear tyre slip moment from Charles shows just that he was on the edge of the traction versus Max, who carries more speed on the apex of the corner. Having lost out about 1.2 of a tenth throughout turn 11, the Ferrari driver manages to catch up at this point and he reached the breaking point of turn 13. This is again a different approach as you can see from the way he's made it throughout turn 12. Leclerc uses the brake while Max is lifting which costs him a bit of minimum speed on the run of turn 13. The early apex of Charles and early throttle application does seem to prohibit some wheel spin. However, ultimately he's able to manage his minimum speed in comparison to Max by about 10 km per hour and this trend is also seen at turn 13. Ultimately, Charles gains all the advantage from the previous turn 13 and he carries it all the way to the finishing line. We'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you for tuning in and watching this video. We hope that you thoroughly enjoyed it and we're looking forward to the future videos that will be coming out in the future. Please make sure that you subscribe and leave suggestions as to what comparison you'd like to see next. Until next time, we'll catch you soon. Racing Telemetry.